Yep. So once more, I welcome everyone. This is um, lecture five, I guess. Lecture five. Yeah, this is this is lecture five. <laughs> uh, this is lecture five of introduction to agent based model scores. And uh, today we are going to have a quite funny script of the, the lecture because uh, basically I want to I want to teach you some some new features on a net logo, but at the same time, I want to basically show you how to extend models. Um, and uh, I want I, I want to extend the models we've done like uh, last week. So I ca I'm kind of a, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do it as we go. So we might have some issues, some bugs to fix and some stuff. I thought it was a better uh, way of teaching you, especially because, uh, yeah, well, when you're programming, like uh, things happen, and you should should learn how how to manage uh, these things as well. While like uh, if I prepare like the perfect lesson with all the code done and stuff like that, uh, it feels that programming is amazing and flawless, and that's not quite. Uh, an accurate picture of how things go. So just to remind ourselves about the model we've done last, le last lecture, uh, we basically wanted to create uh, a maze. And we wanted uh, to create an agent able to find a target inside uh, the area of the world. So like uh, the world was painted in white. The obstacles in the maze were painted in red. The target's blue and the agent's green. And uh, that's to say that the colors uh, are very important, not just for programming, but if you want to show your model to anyone and uh, you don't have like a proper color code for the things in your model, uh, it might make it confusing. It might make it like uh, quite hard to understand. So the better you, you pick your colors, the better the visualization of the model is going to be. So be, be aware that like uh, the visualization of the model is it, it's something important to, to, to be careful with and uh, try to make it like the better you can, the best you can, because uh, people are going to thank you for like uh, providing a proper model. Um, we basically created like a two bottoms, the, the setup and go as usual. Uh, we've, we've learned that uh, set up and go are like quite like standard uh, buttons on that logo. Set up is basically just to create the world and to to give like the the initial scenario you need to to run your simulation. And the go button is basically the steps, like uh, what's gonna happen on your model. Eight step. That's also called the tick. Uh, we we got this name, and they have here like a some a nice slider here called number of obstacles. We're gonna work with it, and uh, the idea here is that like a uh, we we can basically pick how many obstacles we're gonna build when we set up the world. So if we create more, uh, the world the, the the maze is gonna be uh, even more complex to 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 be uh, the target's gonna be harder to be found. And if you have less obstacles, of course, the, the target's easier to be found. So uh, that's how it goes. Like we can we can add um, complexity here to the to the maze. And uh, when we run the, the simulation stops when the agent finds the, the blue target. Okay. So we built the code. Um, we've learned about how to comment, uh, how to create comments on your code so you can document it well uh, so people can understand what your commands commands do. Uh, we've learned about patches and how to change the color of the patches. We've learned about um, the patch ahead command, which, which basically uh, returns to the 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 the, the, the command here uh, the the next patch. Like uh, the you have an agent and the the, the patch ahead of the, the the agent. What what what's in there? We compared with the color, so we got the color of the patch ahead. We compared if it's red, because if it's red, it's an obstacle. If it's not red, uh, we just ask the agent to step forward. It's a very simple code. And if the agent's on top of a patch that's blue, it means that the agent found one of the targets. Uh, therefore, the 
the, 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 the simulation is done, basically. One thing that I didn't comment last lesson, and it's important to notice here, is that basically uh, I've built the model not, not just for one agent. I've built the model for uh, multiple agents. And as you can see here, like a, when the condition to stop the simulation is if all people are finished and then it stops. Uh, but all the examples we've run, like uh, the, they are basically for one agent. And today I want to do some work at, at that. Like I want to add some new agents. I want to um, create more targets as well. So I want to build more targets uh, uh, in the simulation. And I also want to evaluate some some uh, statistics about what's going on, how long uh, the agents are taking to find the the the, the targets, uh, and who is the agent who is finding it faster or not, so on and so forth. Uh, for that, like, uh, just want I just want to take a moment here to comment with you about the the info tab, and uh, we've talked about it before, but it's very very important to emphasize how important it is for you to to code uh, to document your 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 model so basically here like uh, we we even have like the when you create a new model it comes with this uh, section written here with like uh, even the the instructions about what should go in each part of it and it's it's very important for you to to make sure that you document your code as you go. So like, what is this code? Like a general understanding of what the model is trying to show or explain. And let's say that like the model is uh, trying to show um, how fast agents find uh, random targets in a maze like let's just say like uh, that that that's basically what the model does like in a very let's say uh, summarized way here like how it works what rules the agent use to create the overall behavior uh of the model so you can you can even say here like you can uh, create like a for instance some uh sub subsection about like uh say um I'm gonna do it like instead of doing like this, let's just do, use like a numbering. So we can number it and say like the first thing the agent does is uh, the movement. So the, the most important part is the movement. So the agents board's in a very bad place here. So I can just move some stuff around here. So the agents um, move forward if there is no obstacle. Um, agents also randomly, um, let's just check the code here to check what it does again. So like basically uh, the, the agents have 1% of chance of um, just turning left. And we've done that to fix uh, some flawed behavior, some flawed behavior last lesson because some of the targets were never being found. So uh, agents also randomly turn left 90 degrees with 1% chance, let's say, like that's a way of uh, documenting it. Um, and let's just put like some stuff like this. Um, we can also talk about like the objective. Um, so we can say that the agents um finish their objective whenever they find the target which is a blue patch let's just say like that so we can keep documenting here it's it's like when you uh when you click on the edit button you can notice that it's gonna um show the the results here it's markdown code so if you don't understand it a little bit you can you can search about it like the numbering here you can see that's not correct so you can even like uh, let's just say let's do like this g and see what happens then we have like some some different perspective in here let's just do like one and two and uh, if you want to to make like the 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 text here like uh, uh, italic you use like a uh, one asterisk if you want it to make it bold you use two 
so you can even edit stuff in here so the the information um fits what what you want it's very important here on how it works also to highlight the, the the procedures you have so you can even talk about the procedures so you can say that setup is responsible for creating the maze and positioning let's say positioning um the agent the agents and the targets on random initial spots let's just say like and the goal um will take care of the agents um decision making regarding moving forward forward or turning right or left so you can basically like a uh, uh all right anything is anything that you you might think it's important for the reader to to understand and uh man i i i just want to emphasize like documentation is is essential it's really really important and it's critical especially on that logo because other people might want to reuse your code they, they might want to reuse your model and uh, if you don't give like a proper documentation, people are just going to look at it and just give up very quickly. So make sure you document your code, make sure you document your info tab. And um, that's basically how it goes. Um, I, I I also want to talk a little bit about random numbers. We, we've talked about it last lecture a little bit, but I just want to... Um, show you uh, some aspects of the random numbers. Actually, I don't know if in, in any other course you've heard of that, but basically there are no random numbers. <laughs> That's like fiction. There is there is no such a thing. Um, in the computer, the numbers are, are what we call like pseudo, pseudo uh, random numbers because basically the computer simulates the, the randomness of number. And uh, a very easy way to show that is basically just like a, uh, when we ask um, NetLogo to show random number, you can see that, of course, like a, it's going to show random numbers here from 0 to 100. But there is something behind the choice of the numbers. It's called the seed. And uh, the seed is basically the, the let's say, it, it, it's kind of um, a value that's given to the, the random gen, the, 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 the random gen, the, random number generator uh, and it kind of uh, sets where does the random generator starts to generate the numbers um, so just just for instance like uh, um, we can uh, define this uh, random seed here random seed very easily so let's say I want to set the random seed for 61 and then I'm going to generate another random number, a uh, hundred. So the first number you're going to you're going to see it's thirty-three, eight, twenty, and twelve. If I set the seed again to sixty-one, and ask that logo to give me other numbers and sequence, you're going to see that it's going to give me the same numbers. It's thirty-three. The next one's going to be eight, then twenty-seven. Uh, next one's going to be seventeen, and then twelve. So as you can see, like. Uh, uh, the, the, the seed is what basically defines uh, what's the sequence of random numbers. Uh, normally, when we start the, 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 the random numbers generator, um, the, the, the perception we have is that all the numbers are random, but you, you can kind of manage that. And one thing to see that in our model here is when we generate the maze. So every time we hit setup here, you can, you can see that like a, a different maze is generated. OK, well, in some situations, uh, you want to make sure that you always start with the same setup. Like uh, sometimes you just want to make sure that even uh, using a random generator for things in your setup procedure, you want to make sure that um, you, you want to replicate stuff. Right. So um, it, it's very important to uh, to know these things because they are going to basically define a lot of stuff. So what I'm going to do here just to show you this uh, 
aspect of NetLogo is I'm going to create a preset, a preset um, procedure here that basically, let me just make it beautiful here and give it space. Uh, what it basically does is it, it changes the seed, okay? Uh, it's a function to change the seed here. And then it's going to call the setup uh, function here. So that we have the, the procedure setup here. So it changes the seed and calls setup. So basically uh, what, what happens now is like if I want to go, if I come here and say preset and defines the, the, the seed, it's going to generate a maze. And if I go back and do the same, it's going to generate the same maze. So if I, every time I use the, the seed 100 and I ask to set up and create the maze, it's going to always put the obstacles on the same place. The agent's going to be on the same place and uh, the target's going to be on the same place. While if I change here for 101, we are going to have a different maze. Um, and I guess now you can guess why is that? It's basically because the seed is the same. So every time you have the same seed, it generates the same uh, sequence of uh, actions when you run the, the, the random functions, okay? Uh, any questions about this? This is really important for you to know, and this is very, very important even more for you to understand how it works because it's gonna be useful in the future. Okay, no questions about that. So we can move, um, let's move forward on our lesson. And uh, well, I want to go with you through some um, things I want to do in here. Um, the first thing I want to do uh, in our first lesson is basically to add more agents to the maze. So now, so far, we we have created, let, let me save here. It's important to save. So, so far, we basically um, asked the patches to be white. And uh, we created a number of obstacles. And we created one people in here, OK? So that's the function where. Uh, we create the agents and, uh, well, I want to have more. And the, one of the ways like we can do that is basically creating another slider here. So we can add another slider and this, oops, not, not a button. Uh, I want a slider. Um, so let's add a slider. Um, and this slider is going to be a number of people. So I, 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 that's basically the variable that's going to account for the number of people on my simulation. And I want them to be maximum 10 people here. Um, the, 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 let's say the standard value is, uh, is uh, one. And let's say that the unity here is person or persons. Let's just leave it like that. So basically now we have a new slider here that accounts for the number of people okay um so now from now on as we have this slider here where we we can define like how many people we have on our maze at the beginning of the simulation instead of of creating one people one person here we're going to create um people uh people so we check here just to make sure that the code is all correct and now when we set up here as you can see uh, there is one person, but if I want to create three people, um, it's creating uh, just one. And that's why I want to do that on the fly so we can check what the heck is going on here. So if you go back here, it creates a people, number of people. It sets the size. It sets the color. It sets the heading. But just notice that like a... Um, the person here is created basically always on the zero zero coordinate on our model. So I, I guess that there are three people in there. And uh, if you want to know how many people there are on our models, you can just go here and ask count people. And it's going to say like there are six people in there, but they're all um, on the same spot. So let's make sure that these agents, they, they start at some point. And for that, we've seen uh, the set x y command or i'm gonna do even it even uh better so like um let's basically um let's see how we're gonna do that if i set this the x and y they can end up like a on a on top of an obstacle but like uh, we can also move people so what happens sometimes on that log is that like oh i don't remember um 
how do I move people around the, the simulation? So for that, for that case, uh, what we can do is basically, I'm just going to open a, a new browser here. We have always like the, the help button here where you have a, um, a dictionary with all the, the commands or not look up dictionary, net logo dictionary here. And uh, it's going to open basically the net logo dictionary here where we have basically all the commands you can use on net logo, like uh, all the standard, like the basic uh, commands are here. And uh, well, well, we want to move turtles around. We know the forward, but I want to move them to another patch. Like, so let's just try to see like a move here. Oh, and then you find here move to. So we, as you search the 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 alphabet, the the basically the 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 library of commands of NetLogo, you're gonna possibly bounce on uh, on some of the commands that might be interesting. So we can check here. So move to what move to does. So move to agent. So the turtle sets its x and y coordinates to be the same as the given agent. So here actually. Well, we are moving the turtle through the same space as another turtle. So it's not quite um, not what we want. But you can also move the turtle to one of the patches. And that's interesting. That's quite what we're looking for here. I want to move the turtles to one patch, a random patch. But like uh, I want to be a patch that's like a, a patch available that's not an obstacle. So um well, let's try it. So we go back on that logo and let's try the command. So I want to move I, like the the, third, the, the the agent person I'm creating here. I want to move it to one of the patches, but I don't want to move to any patch. I want to move it, it uh, I, mo I want to move it to one of the patches with, oops, not which, with um, P color equals white, all right, because those are the patches that like uh, are not obstacles. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if there is going to be any problem here. Well, now it's going to work. Okay. So before, let me just do something here. Let me comment this part of the code and go back. And I'm, I just want to show you something like uh, sometimes when you like in this situation here, sometimes when you're creating the first scenario, what happens that the turtles can be created on top of some of the obstacles, if you put an obstacle on the coordinate zero, zero on your world. But now what we're doing is basically we're doing two things. We're fixing something and adding a new uh, way of distributing the turtles because now the turtles, the, the, the agent person, which, which is also a turtle, is being created. And at the same time, it's being moved to one of the patches that has um, a white color, which is basically like the, the spaces where the turtles can move. Um, so now when we click create set setup here, you can notice that like uh, the number of people are created. So we have six people, one, two, three, four, five, six people here. And um, um, basically what's going on here is that um, they are distributed in random spaces and um, white spaces in here. Okay. Uh, notice that some of the turtles can be trapped like this guy here. He's never going to leave this area because... There is no way to escape that part of the maze, but it happens. It's a, um, I, I'm not going to go on depth on that, but like I've created a function to create mazes without having these dead, like these uh, dead ends here. Okay. So there, there are ways of creating mazes on that logo. I'm not going to go through that because it's going to take a while to explain. And the, the idea of the lesson today is, uh, is different. Okay. Um, so that's the first, uh, let's say, uh, extension we want to do, like uh, the, the, the first thing we want to do on the model. And uh, if we, well, if you run the model now, you're going to see that the turtles are all going to find uh, the target, but this one here, because this one has no way to, to, to escape that area. So let's just create another scenario here where, like, uh, yeah, I think now it's fine, like a, uh, so we can let me just like uh, slow down here, and so we can see the turtles moving, and as they move, they might end up finding the the target. Let's see how long is it gonna take. 
So you can see that like there is not a turtle trapped here. Eventually, she's gonna the, the turtle is gonna escape. I hope, and uh, they're gonna possibly find the their way. So what what happens here is basically like that. Now we have multiple agents trying to find the target all at the same time, and uh, but but notice that at the beginning we just basically defined how one turtle works and the rest just follows. Uh, let me accelerate here and see if uh, oh not oh nice they are all trapped now there okay interesting all right oh, okay one turtle found the way the other turtles are just like stuck on that area there let's see if they're gonna leave okay and uh, there is just one now one one little turtle here like uh, stuck in there let's see if if eventually it might like leave because of that function we created like a, the turtle has one percent of chance so just notice that in this case here it took like a, let's let's say four million forty nine thousand steps for all the turtles to find the target here and uh, that, that's a hell of a lot of time but it happens and uh, as i've said it's random and uh if if we knew the um, Let's say if we knew the seed for this simulation here, we could replicate it as many as many times as many times as we want, and um, that's basically how how it would go. So I'm gonna just let, let's say here we created the the preset here. Um, let's say we we kind of uh, create a bottom here. That's basically the preset, and let's create a random number just to make sure that we can. Um, replicate the same scenario so like now if i create a preset like this anytime i click on it it's going to be the same scenario and it's going to take the same amount of time for the turtles to find the target so let's just accelerate it as more as we can because the the time's uh limited for the lecture and uh see what happens here so um so it's running now we have only one turtle that's missing okay so now it stopped so just notice that it for this scenario here it took um, four million three three hundred sixty three thousand uh, ticks to for all the turtles to find the target. And notice that if we click on preset again and ask it to go again, it's gonna be the exactly same amount of of ticks because uh, the seed is the same. So it's running basically the same simulation with the same steps. Uh, run before so I expect it to stop by now like uh, yeah and it stopped so four three sixty three thousand nine four eight two so it, it, that's how it works basically okay um David do you have a question uh but can't the number be different because of the one percent of the left term? um it's the same because even when you call the the function to call the random of one percent of chance it's gonna generate the same numbers in sequence. The, the random generator is gonna create all the numbers, all the random numbers, the same way if you use the same seed. So that's why when you run your code mul multiple times, you have to make sure that the seeds are different every time you run. If you don't provide the seed for the, the simulation, um, what mostly happens, I'm not sure on that logo, but like mostly what happens is that the computer takes uh, the time of the day and use the time of the day as a seed. So that that kind of uh, uh, creates the randomness on your simulation. Like if you don't provide the seed every time you run the, the, the model, it's, it's going to be different because of that. Oh, so the seed for the map is the same for the random number? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, so when you, and that's the thing, like when you set the seed, like uh, the sequence of random functions is going to return the same numbers always. And that's why you have always the same, the same behavior. Okay, thank you. okay, so that's the preset here. Let's just put it like uh, by the side here. We might not use, might not use it like uh, anymore, but just leave it there. It's quite cute. Um, let me just move this. Uh, here for now so we don't have distractions go back to see you all right um so another extension we like another uh extension of the model we can do is also to create 
uh, multiple targets. So it might be that like uh, we we are like it might be that you're simulating a scenario where you have multiple targets. Like uh, imagine like you're evacuating a stadium. So when you evacuate a stadium, you, you have multiple exits. You don't have only one exit. So people can go to any of them. Um, on our situation here so far, we we've created just one. Um, so this is like a, it's, it basically creates uh, the the target, and we created just one here. But we can also um, create another slider here, and call it like number of targets. So we can make like a more than one target. Let's say it's between one and ten. The the standard value is a uh, one and the unit is like target or targets okay uh, and minimum has to be one of course otherwise our model is never gonna end uh, let me just fix this i think you can put zero people in there as well let me just like put the minimum here as one so of course if you put zero if you put if you create like the simulation for zero people it's never gonna end and uh okay one person one target and here now I want to change the number of targets according to the this slider here. So we go back on the code. And here, when we ask one of patches, we're going to ask n of patches. Uh, and this n is going to be equals to the number of targets. So like um, it's going to ask the number of targets uh, patches to set the color in blue. So let's see how it goes here. When we click on setup here, now notice that we have one person and we have four targets. Okay. Um, what can happen sometimes is that the target can fall on top of another target that's already there. So like uh, you can end up like with two targets on the same space. So to avoid that, we can even uh, ask here uh, pets uh, with a color different not blue because then we make sure that the, there is not a target beforehand place it on the same spot as that target there so like now we can create like four and four and four targets and if you can create more people here five people and and four targets then you have five people and when you go and then when we go now just notice that the the time is much faster like they find the target much faster of course because they have plenty of options now instead of just one. So uh, let's just make a preset here and go. And uh, it's it's interesting how the presets are always like, so now we we run, it took like a, around 800,000 steps in here for all the, tar the, the, for all the agents to find the target. But notice that in this case here, all the agents found the same target. All right. The, the other three targets were like completely ignored. They just went to find this target here. So let's make it a little bit different. Let's just make sure that like uh, every time an agent finds a target, that target disappeared. OK, so how do we do that? Um, on the function to go, um, when the on the for when you ask the, the people, the agents here, to move, if they land on a, on a blue patch, they set their finished uh, variable to true. So that means that they don't move anymore because they are done. Okay. What we're going to do here is, um, besides uh, setting the, the, the finished variable of the agents to, to true, we are going to change the color of the target the agent found. So if other agents find that target as well, they don't they, they ignore it. Let's say like uh, every targets like uh, every targets for uh, one agent basically. Um, and for that situation, what we can do here is basically uh, we're gonna set the peak color. Okay, uh, we're gonna set the peak color to yellow. So let's see if it if it goes well here if it works. Uh, I guess it will. So let's just give a, a setup here. I want it to be slower because I want to see what's going on. But yeah, that, that's basically what happened here. Um, and then we found another problem in our model because, um, well, there is one agent missing here, but all the targets were taken already. So 
uh, if you have more people than targets um of course one person is not gonna find it's like the, the the that 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 game like the the chairs dance like where you dance around the chairs and you have one chair less than the number of people and the last person is just like out of the game so um we can also check these things um i'm not gonna go through that hey, let's let's do it like uh, we are having fun here doing this uh, this model and uh, we can keep doing that um so what what we have to do is to make sure that these two variables here they don't mess up with each other okay so what we need is to make sure that the number of targets it's always like a or the same or higher than the number of people on the simulation okay so when we do the setup here and uh, before uh, we create obstacles and then we create people here, before we, we create the targets, before we create the targets, we check if the number of targets is, um, is smaller than the number of people, okay? Because if that happens, if the number of targets is smaller than the number of people, we can force the number of targets. So we can set number of targets to be the number of people. See how, how that goes, okay? So just notice here, these two sliders here, that they um, the number of people is higher than the number of targets. Let me see if I, the number of targets should if it's uh bigger than the the number of people actually that's how how it should go so uh in this situation here the number of targets smaller the number of targets is smaller than the number of people in this case here the number of targets is smaller than the number of people let's put the number of targets like a, let's say here two and they have five people so when you hit setup now it's gonna fix the number of targets for us. So even if you want only one target here, when you create setup, it's gonna fix for you and it's gonna put the number of targets exactly equals to the number of people. And this is really important because uh, it shows that what you do on your code tab influences the, the interface tab and vice versa, okay? Another important thing I wanna, talk about here um is the colors of course like we we um net logo has a color code and this color code is not like the rgb it's not like the, the kind of color codes we are used to use especially uh if you consider like this color codes used by designers to create like uh, images and a uh, website and stuff um But, uh, man, where's the color? So let's say we have this agent here. Let me just inspect it. Where is the inspect uh, thing? Okay. So first of all, when you inspect an agent, the agent's going to have this attribute, which is basically the color. And you're gonna notice that all the, the, the agents are gonna have a color that's basically uh, an, a number, it's 55 uh, in this situation here. And the 55 here, uh, as you're gonna see, it basically means that like, uh, the color swatches, yes, that's we, there we go. So what the 55 means? The 55 means that the color of that agent's this color here, okay? It's uh, the number 55. And uh, when we click on the color swatch here, uh, you're gonna notice that the num name of the color is shown here. So that's green. Okay, so 55 is green. Uh, how does the, the color scale works for NetLogo? Well, it's numbers, or as you can see, so it's all numbers. Um, the numbers, they are connected to the, the name of the color, of course, but you're gonna notice that like uh, each row here is one scale of color and this scale goes from black all the way passing through the color you want through the, the gradient of the color all the way to white, okay? So that's basically how, 
how it goes. So, um, for instance, if you want the the, the gray scales, uh, it's on the the decimals, like the the, the first decimals, like uh, from zero to nine point nine here. And as you can see, uh, as you increase the number, it moves from black from the darker color all the way to the lighter until you have the the white color. So all the the colors if they have 0.9 in the end they are white and the the zero the 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 initial number on each scale is black and uh, you can see that like uh, each decimal is gonna have uh, one different color so zero is gray 10 is uh, red 12 is orange 30 is a uh, brownish uh, 40 is yellow 50 is uh, like a dark green 60 light is light green like we can call it lime you can see the name of the color in here when you click on 65 75 is turquoise the names are here cyan sky blue violet and so on and so forth okay so uh when you say that the color is like 47 what does that mean it means that it's a yellow and it's a yellow closer to the lighter yellow than to the darker yellow because seven is closer to nine uh, if you wanna, if you wanna know which color is eleven, eleven is like a very dark red because it's closer to ten, and uh, that's basically how it goes. You can change the increments here, so you can even increase like the the gradient, so you can make the gradient even more like a, uh, let's say a fine tuned in here. Like you can uh, change the 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 scale, so it can be zero point one, zero point five, and then you can change like a. As you want so it's a float number the only difference here is that like uh, you need to check the initial decimal value to know which color you're talking about and the unity of the number is gonna tell you like uh, how dark or light that color is represented and if it if the, the the unity of the number is zero it's black and if the the first decimal of the number is nine um the first like um uh, float decimal number like here 9.9 .9, then it's white like 19.9 29.9 and so on and so forth so that's basically how the the color grade works on uh, on that logo all right so what why am i talking about that well basically i want to create here in, the, in our model some some sort of uh measurement of how quick the the agents found the target Okay, so I want to color my agents so we can visualize that. And I want to make sure that the color of the agents um, changes as they, uh, let's say, uh, if, they, they took, they, if they take too long to find the, the, the colors, I want them to be darker, let's say. Okay, and if they... Um, if they find it really fast, I want them to be lighter, just so I know like how fast the agents found the target. So for that, first thing we need to create here, and I'm just creating this from the top of my head, but uh, the first thing we need to create is a measurement of how long the agents are taking, uh, are taking to find um, the target, okay? And uh, to do so, uh, we need to, to make sure that like uh, the people, besides the, the finished variable, they have, um, let's say here, um, speed, let's say speed, it's going to be a variable that's going to count for um, how many steps the agent took to uh, find the target. Okay, so as, as times goes by, these, uh, these, these values are going to get like... Uh, higher and higher and uh, when we create people we need to make sure that we set the speed of all the agents to zero because that's the beginning of the simulation and they should always start like a re reset um and of course like every time um if the agent's not finished of course uh we want to make sure that the speed is a speed plus one uh, every every time step, the agent uh, makes a movement or just makes a turn, okay? Um, and also, we, we want to change the color of these, uh, these agents. And uh, for that, we basically 
uh, we, we, we want to set the color and this color here is not the color of the patch is the color of the agent and we want to set this color but we want to create like kind of a, a scale for the color for the agents and uh, well I don't know by heart all the commands but I know that there is a command that combines uh, scale and color for the agent so we, we can go back on our dictionary here and let's just type like a scale for instance and see what happens wow it pops up it just popped out here the, the scale color scale color is a function that receives a color a number and range one and range two so what what does it does it reports a shade of color proportional to the value of number so that's exactly what we're looking for okay so if range one is less than range two then the larger the number, the lighter, the shade of color. But if range two is less than range one, the color scale is inverted. So it basically it's saying here that the, if this number is higher than this one, you're gonna go from dark to light. And uh, if you, if it's the other way around, you're gonna go from light to darker colors in here. It even gives us an example here. So like a, it's asking the turtles to set the color to a scale color of red. So it says like I'm on the red bar on the, the red row of the scale color. Uh, I want to use the age of people as the parameter to, to define the color. And uh, I want to go from zero to 50 here. And it basically makes all the all the numbers for us, which it's great. Okay, So let's just see um, how would it look like. So we set the color here, let's say, so we're gonna create the, the, the scale color. I wanna make the, the scale on blue because I like blue. Um, and we are gonna use the speed as the parameter to, to define like uh, how the colors are gonna be. And the thing is that the range one is gonna be the, the maximum value of the speed from all the people on our simulation plus one. So I'm just basically deciding that uh, we are gonna go from dark to lighter color so the 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 longer the people take to find the target the lighter they become okay let's check if this thing is working well it's super fine let's create a setup um and that's quite interesting but like let me just do something here first because um we have to when you create the, the turtles it's nice to set the color of the turtles as well. So basically here set initial color based on color grading gradient. So now when we click on set up the, the turtles, they're starting white <laughs> uh, because they start with zero. Let's let me just put one here and see if the, it, if it helps a little bit. Yeah, so we can see them as blue now. Um, and as the turtles go, let's just see here what happens. So as the turtles go, they're going to become darker, as you can see, because it's taking too long for the 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 the, the turtles to find the, the spot there. But they're getting dark too fast, right? So they're getting dark too fast. And for that reason, I want to make sure that let me just try to start them 0.1 and see how it goes. Doesn't yeah, so they start like very, very light. And um what I want to do here is that like instead of increasing one by one, I want to increase like a 0 0.01. So it's gonna take a while for them to go darker, but they will go darker. They went darker quite fast here. Well, as we're doing as we go, guys. Don't expect the coach before perfect. I'm not gonna fix it now, but as you can see, like uh, you can basically check the that the colors they are changing over time, and you can do that on that logo, and that's good for visual vis visualization because basically when you change the color of the agents, you can see in which state each agent is on your model. Like this guy here is gonna get really really dark because he's uh, beyond like a uh, late on finding the target. I, I'm not sure if he's going to find the target. Yeah, it found the target. So then we have one person per target. 
and that's the end of the the simulation i can even try to even make it like even like it's very slight uh change on the color let's see if it makes any difference no it's it's getting dark too fast because of the number of ticks so let me just uh, put like a lot of zeros in here yeah well there might be a better way of doing that but you got the idea any questions so far please again no Okay. Um, well, another important thing we we want to to monitor in here is well. Let me just check something here first. So, um, one one mistake we are making here is basically like we are setting the not finished no that's fine only when it's finished the the, the speed is uh so, oh no no i'm on um, that's why it's going wrong the the increment is here it's not there so it's the speed here that's defining the color and that's what we should change let me see if it, it's gonna work now yeah now you can see that like uh the turtles who end first their lighter the but it not that the increments too small let's make sure that it's on a nice scale that you can notice the difference yeah so look uh from this picture here you can tell like that the, the these four turtles that are lighter they found the target much before this one here that got like dark that's uh that's how it goes so basically we have to fine tune this thing but we have no time for that let's just move forward um but i fixed it it's here where you should uh uh, in, in increment the, the variable. Well, most of the times we are not just interested on uh, looking at the world here and seeing what happens. We, wa we want numbers. We want to make statistics on top of, of the thing. So for instance, if I want to know um, when did uh, each person here on our model find the target, uh, I, can, I can, for instance, ask here, like I can print um the speed or uh, the speed's gonna be like uh of people let's just say so and here you have the numbers of um the 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 number the, the the speed but the speed here i i kind of destroyed it because um i used the increment here so let's let me just like um, create a, an auxiliary variable here it's going to be time counter. This is not ideal, guys. Like, if we had more time, I would possibly make sure that this thing is fixed. I would round the number, multiply it for something. But, like, uh, now I just want to make sure that, um, that we can end the lesson with our code doing what I expected to do. So I, I, I added a time counter here. Just to know when the turtles they they finished uh, finding the targets. Okay, so there is one missing guy there. It's gonna find. Yeah. So um, now if you go here uh, and uh, print the speed of people, you're gonna have the 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 final speed like the the the, the, the color of the, the the guys. And if we look for the time counter here, you're gonna see that each turtle found the target in one time step. So there is one turtle who found the target on the time 23, very quick. Another one on uh, 1,408, and so on and so forth. And the last turtle found the target on the, the tick at 353K888. It's basically like the tick. We ended the simulation here, OK? Um, so what can i do to visualize these things like as we go for instance so like uh, we can create monitors and monitors are nice ways of doing so because like uh, let's create a monitor here for instance i want to know what's the fastest uh person and uh let me just put this on the on the name here and the fastest person is like the person with the minimum um time counter 
from um, all the people. So this, this function here basically takes the minimum value from this uh, list that's created when you ask the time counter of the people. And as you can see here, the fastest person is uh, 23. That's the time when the person ended like, and found the target. So if you run it again, you see like the one person found the target within three time steps in here. And this is a monitor that can help us to basically acquire like a straight away information about what's going on on our model. We can also create another monitor here to find uh, the, the slowest uh, person as well. And for that, we would try to find the maximum number of time counter, counter of people. That's another way of doing that. And you're going to see here that the slowest person took like uh, more than 239K uh, time steps to, to find the target. And if you run again, of course, like the monitors are going to change. And then now we know the, the fastest person and the slowest person. We can also be interested on, on learning, like uh, what's the average? What's the average average um, time of people? How, like uh, on average, how many time, how much time people are spending like to find the target? And that's basically the mean. So now we, I want the, the mean of the time counter of people. And then it's going to show me here, like the average time is around one, it's 13,692 basically. Um, we can also be interested on the medium and the medium, uh, medium time. And the medium is very interesting to, to show us, for instance, uh, uh, if the distribution of the times where people are finding the target is uh, normally distributed or not. Like uh, if the medium converts with the average time, it means that we have a more well distributed uh, time for the, the targets to be found. While if the medium is very different from the average time, then that, that, that thing is not happening. So we can just type here medium of the time counter of the people. So it's going to basically calculate the medium. And we can uh, kind of uh, follow up with the, the average. So when we run here, let's put the setup. I want to go slower here so we can check if the numbers are changing quite together. But as you can see here, the average time and the medium time, they are very different. That means that there is some, some sort of different distribution. It's a bit more skewed uh, distribution than, uh, than equally distributed. Uh, among the times of the turtles to find the, the target. Any questions so far? Let me go back to, to the screen where I can see you. All good up to here? All right. So now I want to move this world uh, here because we're going to start like plotting some stuff. Um, and uh, of course, like graphics are possibly the best way of visualizing what's going on on our models, more than just like uh, static uh, numbers as the monitors show us. The, the monitors are very important as well, but graphics tend to, to, to give us more information and more insights on what's going on on our, on our, on our models. So uh, to add a, a plot, we basically go here on a plot and we click on add button here and I want to make a plot in here so let's just like uh, show the plot it's gonna open the tab for the plot um, and I, I the first thing I wanna uh, let's say here I, I want to plot like the histogram of uh, when people uh, found the target so we can have a better idea of like a how, how the times are distrib distrib distributed. So we can, let's say this is a histogram, histogram of uh, target time to find the target. I'm gonna create like some stupid uh, the target, let's call it TFD. Um, so the, the X is, the x-axis uh, is basically the time. Let's uh, call it the time. The y-axis is um, the number. This thing is not going to work well because like, it's going to be one total per time step. 
Um, yeah, I think th th this this histogram is not going to be good. Um, so how how shall we we show this? Um, let's make it different. Let's make a number of people. Um, found. So we we have this uh, when we go on the flight with the, on the flight, it's, uh, it's a bit like more difficult. So here's the number of people, number of people on the y-axis. And uh, what I wanna do here, like uh, here we just define the labels. I want it to outscale because like as time goes by, the graphic uh, becomes like a more squashed and we need to change the, the the scale on the the axis so it's nice always to keep the auto scale on uh, the show legend uh is a, you can also add it like it basically it's going to show the plot pants here so the the color and what it means for each one in our case we're going to have only one line so it doesn't make much difference in here and um well what i'm gonna try to show here is uh, it, I, I wanna basically plot uh, the number of people, I wanna count the people with finished, okay? Why is that? Because like now I, uh, we're gonna have a graphic that's gonna show a time scale of how many people find the target as we go. And uh, of course I expect it to work well here. Let me just like, uh, in the color here, of course you can click on the color and it's gonna show you that that like a window we've we've seen before. I want the line to be red, just for fun. Uh, I want to apply it. I want my graphic here to be a bit bigger, so we can see things happening better. Click on setup, and then go. So we are gonna see that like uh, as our model like uh, have only two states for the turtles, like it's finished or not finished. What happens here is that we we have a, a graphic showing basically. Uh, when each turtle found the target and uh, how far is uh, one target from another. So like here you can tell like uh, that the first turtle found the target very quickly after a while, like here around like 16,000, the second turtle found, found the target. Here around 172,000, the, the third turtle found the target. And by the end here is when the, the last turtle found the target. If we have more people, let's just put 10 people here. When we click on setup, the targets are going to be 10 as well. Uh, and we go, you're going to see that like uh, we almost have like quite an exponential curve in here. If you just take the dots, the points and uh, try to visualize them. Uh, we, we have in this situation here, some, some, not some, like two people here who are like stuck because they, they have no way out of this part of the, the maze. Let me just make sure here that like all the turtles, they they can find a way out. Just notice that this turtle here eventually just like uh, landed on a target at the beginning. So it's going to be zero. And then let's see how it goes now. Yeah, and then, then that's the end. So from, from this graphic here, basically, we, we, we can we can draw like a pattern of like uh, how, how, how fast the turtles are finding the targets. And obviously, like at the beginning, the turtles have a lot of targets to find, like they have 10. And as they find the, the targets are getting less and less and less, which makes them take longer to find all their targets. While if we basically we removed the restriction of the targets, like if we didn't make the targets become yellow, for instance, uh, the turtles would um, possibly find the targets faster. And one way of seeing that is uh, let's let's create here a mechanism that turns on and off. Let's create a switch now, and this switch is going to be called um, unique target. Okay. So unique target means that like uh, uh, each target can be found only once. And if it's off, the target can be found multiple times. And to, to manage that, we're going to go back on the code and we're going to check uh, where do we manage the targets. You can use the find button here so you can, uh, can find things easier on the code. Um, and uh, let's see. In which part of the code 
the the targets are, are changing color so we can go here targets and we can see that in this line here it's basically uh where we create the target so that's not the place so we can keep going here target 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 and uh, then we have here and it, well that's basically where like an agent it's uh it's on a blue patch so he found the target and then the agent sets the color TL. That's exactly the, the exact point on the code where we are changing the color. So what we're going to do here is create a conditional that like uh, if the switch unique target, unique target. So if unique target is true, and we set the color to yellow. And if the unique target's not true, that means that like uh, multiple agents can find the target. And I, I hope it works now. Um, I think the if here uh, doesn't need these uh, brackets here. That's why it's, uh, it's claiming that there is something wrong. So if unique target, uh, so what what happens now is like if it's off. Let's 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 see what happens now. Let's just slow down here. And let's go. So as you can see, like for instance, this guy here, he found the target already, but the target didn't change color. So you can have more more agents in there. And then like, uh, as you can see, like the, 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 in this case here, not like we have stuck agents again. So this guy here is never going to find a target. Let's find another one. But like what's expected is that like they find the target much quicker, like uh, within like 5,000 ticks in here. If we run again, let's just see here what what how long is it gonna take? Like we think twelve thousand uh, twelve thousand ticks in here. If we run again, um, it's uh, within uh, less than two thousand ticks. Okay. While when we set this thing on, uh, what's going on is that like uh, they're gonna take much longer because uh, every target that's found is like uh, disabled. All right. And now it's, it's taking like almost 60,000 uh, ticks in here. Um, one thing that we're going to learn later is how to run multiple simulations and get the average of the results. And that's very important because like I want to know on average like uh, which strategy is faster, not by just running one simulation and just giving a number. Like I want to know like if I run a thousand times, a thousand different scenarios, uh, how long does it take for all the, the agents to find the target if we use unique target or not? And that's important to do. We're going to learn how to do that in a neck, like in a, in a, another lecture in the future. I don't know if it's the next one, but like uh, eventually you're going to have to bump at this question. And basically, uh, that's how 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 it goes. I think we. We have more stuff about plotting. I'm not gonna go too deep on that. Like uh, you, you possibly went through the, the tutorials, and you're possibly following the the homeworks. The homeworks give you a lot of tasks to do with the plots as well. Uh, so I hope that you are kind of uh, learning as you go, as the the the, the textbook of the, the the course is quite like straightforward and uh, very uh, like a programming and learning and programming and learning. Any questions, guys? No, thank you. OK, so if there are no questions, uh, that's our lecture number five. I'm going to end the, the recording here.